All right, thanks for joining us for today's webinar. Today's webinar is on email marketing. We'll start from the ground up and uh, you know work our way up in how you can build an effective email marketing campaign for your business. My name is Joe Knipp. I've been in web development for the last 15 years with a focus on the marketing side for about the last six years. With me today is Greg Webb. Hey guys, my name is Greg Webb. I'm an expert SEO consultant. Been doing this for about five years. Um, by the way, we will take some time at the end to answer all your questions. So if you do have any questions as we go along, just go ahead and jot them down and we'll try to get to them as quick as we can towards the end here. Right. And also keep in mind, we will be posting this webinar on our site after it is done, uh, probably about a couple hours after it's done. So if you miss anything or you want to review anything, you'll be able to go through the whole thing again. Uh, we'll also include any links to any relevant resources or products, anything that we discuss that might be uh, you know, of use to you will We'll include uh, links to those. So let's get started. Um, email marketing done properly can be a, a very effective and profitable solution for your business. Your customers are certain to already be using email, uh, probably on a regular basis, and email campaigns can be a very, very low cost. So this allows for serious ROI potential, return on investment. Uh, in today's webinar, we're going to discuss the following topics. Building an email list, designing effective emails, creating effective content, and then some strategies on, and ideas on how you can maximize your results uh, for your email campaign. Also, you'll want to use some type of email marketing software or plant platform to manage your gut campaign. You don't want to just go into you know, your Hotmail, Gmail address, build up a bunch of contacts and send them messages. Um, you're not going to get metrics for that kind of thing. Uh, you know, it's just not a good way to run an email marketing campaign. Um, there's several good options available to you. I tend to recommend senduser.com. It's free to get started. Um, if you you know if you have less than 100 people on your email list, it doesn't cost you anything to run your campaign. And then as you gain users, um, you know the different higher level accounts are uh, the pricing is as good as it gets. So again, we'll include any link to any resources uh, once we post this online. So the first part of any email link emailing campaign is obviously to uh, put your list together of who you're actually going to target. So how do you go about doing this? Well, it all starts by, uh, by asking for permission first. So, I mean, who doesn't like to get emails that are totally unwanted? I mean, everybody hates getting those types of emails. Um, so the last thing that you want to do is to just spam people with unwanted solicitations. Obviously, that's not going to help your engagement at all. And it's simply just going to turn people off from actually using your service. So um, make sure that whatever you do, that, uh, you know, subscribers do have a way to opt into your service. It also will help with, uh, with your delivery rate of these emails, too. So um, now a few other things, you know, when you're building an effective email list, um, not only do you want to make sure that you get permission, but, um, you know, there's a few other things that you want to do too. Um, you know, there's no shortage of resources, resources available for you to be able to buy email lists. So, uh, you know, sending emails to complete strangers, technically, uh, it's not illegal to do that, but, um, you know, you're just going to get a lot more complaints than sales if you do that. So, um, you know, just make sure that you take the time to, to build this out. And, uh, you know, make sure that anybody who's getting constant updates or emails is somebody who is actually interested in learning more about your business. So let's go over some different types of permission, uh, different types of and levels of permission you should be aware of when building an email list. First, there's implied permission. This can be existing or previous customers or maybe even somebody who's handed you just handed you their business card, um, you know, with their email address on it. With implied in pr permission, it's probably a good idea to send a message to confirm that they do wish to continue to receive emails, um, as opposed to just automatically inclu including them in your uh, marketing campaign. Uh, that way, you know, they're actually opting in. Uh, explicit permission is another type of permission. Um, these are people who have filled out a form to actually join your email list or maybe checked a box when they... Uh, uh, you know, that they do wish to receive your updates when they're purchasing something. You, you've probably seen this before, you know, as you're either signing up for a website or um, or you've purchased something. There's a, there's a checkbox there that says, you know, keep me up to date or, you know, allow this site to send me updates. Uh, that's a good way to get users on your email address. Um, then, then there's confirmed permission. So in that case where somebody has actually given you permission to include um, themselves on your email address, 
this is you send them an email, uh, you send them an actual email to confirm that they do wish to be included. This can also be called double opt-in. Um, these subscribers are by far the most likely to engage your emails and, and patronize your business because not only have they signed up for it, they've confirmed, yes, I want these messages. So these are, you know, these are the users you want on your list. Okay, so obviously you know that uh, you need to actually build an effective email list before you can get started. So how do you actually do this? Well, uh, there are many ways that you can basically collect email addresses from customers and potential customers. But, um, you know, one of the most funnel, fundamental ways to collect email addresses is to include a form on the website where visitors can go fill it out and basically adds them to, uh, you know, to your email list, subscribes them and signs them up for it. So, um, you know, putting that on your website is probably the first and most popular way that people will go about doing this. Now, um, if you've been keeping up with our increasing sales webinar series, you will remember that uh, each form field that you add to your signup form will greatly reduce the likelihood that a customer will fill out the form. Uh, so just keep that in mind as you guys are doing this. You know, you want to keep these forms as simple as possible and keep them as clutter free as possible. Don't just have multiple forms on, on the same website. Now, um, you know, maybe even just the first name and email address is enough. And, um, you know, it requires less information. So people are going to be a lot more likely to fill that out because it's not asking them for a million uh, you know, pieces of personal information. So, um, so just make sure that you include on your signup form, um, at least a link to the signup form in every page of your website. So this is really important. So if you have an email list, you know, on every page of your website, you do want to place a link for people to actually click on to sign up for that. Um, it's just going to help you increase that list even more. Uh, you can even include an opt-in checkbox for users when they're purchasing a product or making an inquiry on your website. So, um, you know, before they click that buy button, you know, just have maybe a check button that says, hey, would you like to sign up and uh, receive regular emails from us? I know that a lot of times when I've been signing up for products and services, you know, 99% of the time I'm going to actually sign up for that email list if it's something that I'm interested in. Um, a few other things that you can do uh, to, to help you with collecting these emails, uh, you can do it over the phone. So you can collect email addresses uh, either on over the phone or in person, whatever is easier for you to do. If a customer comes into your store and they're purchasing something, just maybe have an email sign up list right there at the counter. That's just really uh, you know, a great time for them to sign up again because they're purchasing something, they're very interested in your business, so much more likely to sign up. Um, and then last but not least, you want to include sign up forms or, uh, or links to sign up forms on all of your social media profiles that you run for your business. So uh, anything that's like Facebook, you know, uh, Google Plus, Pinterest, whatever that you use, whatever you use for your social media, just make sure that there's a link for people to click, for people to click on to sign up. Um, you know, they allow you to create applications that, uh, you know, sorry, uh, sites like Facebook will actually allow for you to create applications for signing up for email lists. So, um, you know, if you're not using social media for your business yet, or you or you're, maybe you're just not sure how to properly leverage this for your business, make sure that you go on our website and view our previous webinar that we did on social media. Um, that was also in the increasing sales series. So we have a lot of great tips on, on ways that you can get your business out there a little bit more. All right, so now that we've covered some methods for collecting email addresses, uh, let's get into some different ideas for um, how do you increase the amount of users that actually sign up for your email list? One way to do this is to offer an incentive for people to sign up for your email list. Maybe, uh, maybe a discount on, on the user's next purchase if they sign up for your email address. Um, that's a pretty good uh, incentive for people to sign up. Uh, an example I can provide you with is there's a, there's a small mom and pop Italian restaurant that I go to quite a bit. Um, and the owner comes out to every single table, meets everyone, asks them about their experience, and then he lets them know that if you know you give him your email address, uh, he'll give you 10% off the meal that they just ate. Very, very few people refuse to give him their email address. Um, and I can tell you from experience, his campaigns uh, constantly remind me to return to his restaurant. Um, you know, it's a little bit out of the way, so sometimes I don't think about it. I'll see an email. Sometimes I don't even read the email. I just see that I got the email. Next thing you know, I'm I'm thinking about their marinara sauce that they make, and I end up. Uh, end up there for lunch or dinner before you know it. Uh, another way to increase signups is to create exclusivity. By this I mean let your visitors know that, you, uh, that there are special deals, 
maybe discounts or some product offerings that they'll only be able to receive if they do sign up for your email list. Um, again, using my favorite Italian restaurant as an example, he sends out emails that say something like, you know, present this email and receive half off wine with your next email or, or uh, you know, present this email and receive a free appetizer. So all you have to do is print out the email um, and, you know, it kind of creates the feeling that, well, I was going to eat anyway uh, and I was going to get an appetizer. So if I go to this restaurant tonight, I'll actually be saving money. So there's some different ways you can, you know, create exclusivity um, and offer incentives in, for, for people to join your email list. Great example. Um, so with, with all aspects of marketing, when it comes to creating an effective email marketing campaign, branding is extremely important. So um, you need to make sure that your customers recognize you easily whenever they open up your emails. Make sure that you have a very colorful logo or scheme and make sure that you stick to that all the time so that you develop some sort of consistency across your, across your campaigns. Um, now, this may seem very fundamental to many of you guys out there, but you know, unfortunately, we do see lots of marketers making this very simple mistake. So we just thought that this was worth mentioning. Now, um, you need to max maximize the sense of familiarity that users have whenever they open your emails. So um, this can also greatly increase your engagement and just help the overall effectiveness of your email campaign. So in this day and age, you also want to consider that many people are viewing emails on their mobile devices. So, you know, whether it's a iPhone, Android, wherever they use, your message is uh, is going to have to be optimized for being viewed on the mobile device. So um, this this rings especially true for email marketing campaigns. Um, you know your message may actually lose effectiveness with anybody who happens to look it on to look it up on their phone if it's not optimized for that device. So um, if this is a little too technical for you, just don't worry. You know we got your back. Um, you know there are a lot of email templates that are out there that we can give you links to. And uh, you know many of them are already optimized for you uh, for viewing on mobile devices, and they're very easily uh, customizable for your own brand and, and business out there. So we'll link out to a few of those resources at the end of this webinar. Uh, so let's talk about email marketing formats for a little bit. Um, you need your email marketing campaigns to function as a unit. The content and purpose of the email need to work together, both visually and functionally. To do this, there are a variety of formats you can use for your email. It's important to use, utilize enough email formats uh, for the, to fit the different reasons that you might be communicating with your subscribers. For example, you may want to send out periodic emails to keep your subscribers up to date. For this type of communication, you want to use a newsletter format. Um, newsletters, if you're sending out you know, periodic newsletters, this should be focused on information as opposed to promotion. Um, it's kind of the same with, with social media. You want less than 20% of your newsletter to be promotional. Uh, so here's an example. If you're a sporting goods store and winter is just starting, maybe the focus of your newsletter could be tips on good locations for snow skiing or even tips on you know how you know to get started with snow skiing, something like that, just something informational uh, that provides the users with value that way. Then maybe you can include a small section, um, you know, within this message that includes, uh, you know, related products or, you know, if you sell snow skis, you know, snowsuits, stuff like that. Um, and then, to, you know, if you to create that exclusivity that we talked about earlier, maybe you can include a coupon or discount in each of your newsletters. This will also increase engagement. If people know that, you know, there's going to be a coupon every time they open your monthly newsletter that might benefit them, you're much more likely for your users to actually open your newsletter emails. Um, promotional emails, um, this is an altogether different animal, and you'll want to use a different format for these messages. Promotional emails are generally event-driven. Um, they can be about a sale you're offering, maybe a new product uh, you have in stock, something like that. Um, and then you also want to keep in mind... Um, you know, this is another great place to cr create exclusivity for your subscribers using subject lines like email only offer 20% off or something along those lines can help increase engagement. Um, you know, if they, if they can only get that deal through reading that email, they're much more likely to open that. Also, when sending promotional emails, it's best to only include the basic information of the promotion and then link to a web page that provides the rest of inf information as well as, you know, the opportunity to sign up or, or purchase the promotional offer. 
This allows you to better attract the engagement of your email campaigns. If you have your analytics set up, um, you know, obviously you can track who came to those pages through your email campaign. So uh, something to consider with that. Uh, event invita invitations, that's just something else to consider. These can be as simple as appointment re reminders. If you run an appointment driven business, appointment reminders can help reduce the amount of missed appointments and in turn reduce lost or wasted time for your business. I've actually set up uh, email appointment reminders for a doctor's office a few years ago. And to this day, this doctor still thanks me for how much this has helped reduce missed appointments. Um, you know, he, he says this was, you know, a big help to his business. So something to consider that way uh, if you are an appointment driven business. Another way to use event invitations is, you know, if you're having a sales event, maybe a grand opening, um, any type of event you can create that, that fits your business. You know, I'm, we kind of mentioned some of these in the promotional format, but the difference here is with an event invitation, you'll want to encourage your users to actually sign up and say, yes, I'm attending the event. Another way you can kind of just engage your users. You can also track the effectiveness of your campaign. Uh, and then one way to maybe create that exclusivity is to say limited space available, reserve your spot now, you know, in, encourage people to feel like, oh, they're getting something not everybody can have. Uh, or another thing, you know, to create that incentive, show your invitation at the register for a discount, something like that. So again, you have to use these things to fit your business. Uh, not everybody's going to have a storefront, that kind of thing. So, uh, you know, get creative with this stuff and, 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 you know, take these examples and try to fit them to your business. All right, let's talk about creating effective content. Um, you know, when it, when it comes to the content of your emails and some of the strategies that you're using for creating content, it's really important that you focus on a few different things here. Um, so in this section of the webinar, we're going to break down some elements of a marketing email and just give you guys some suggestions on things that you can do to maximize the interest of your messages. So uh, let's just go over subject lines, uh, from addresses, information, offers, and links. Uh, okay, so subject line. This is the first impression that people are going to get of your email. You want to create compelling subject lines that are going to actually encourage your users to open the email and start reading it right away. Um, something you want to avoid here is using subject lines that might be too generic. Uh, you know, things like news from, from you know, whatever your company name is um, or just November newsletter, something very generic like that. That's not likely to compel a subscriber to open the email. Uh, you want something that tells the user what is the value of opening this email. So you always want to uh, keep in mind what is the value words in the subject line. Something like limited time offer or $50 savings is, is much more likely to elicit clicks on your email than, you know, again, something as simple as November newsletter, stuff like that. Keep your, keep your subject lines, uh, you know, again, value. What is the value of opening this email? That's the key to your subject lines. Also, you want to keep in mind that you are limited to the number of characters that will de be displayed. Um, this is going to vary between the different email platforms, different email clients. Uh, but if you stay in the 40 to 50 character range, you should be okay. That's kind of, you know, about the average. Again, it's going to vary greatly. Some email, you know, uh, email clients are going to let you see 100 characters. Um, but you, you want to keep that in mind. Uh, keep the value words early in your subject lines. Um, I see a, a lot of people make this mistake. They, you know, some people put m way too long of a subject line and then, you know, the value in their, in their uh, subject line actually gets truncated and, and therefore is unseen. Okay. So the from address, setting up a proper from address in your messages is critical to the success of your campaign. So uh, the from address is another area that will be among the user's first impressions when they see the email. So you want this from address to be, obviously familiar to your customers. So um, this means that it's important to set it up so that whatever it, whatever happens, your message is, uh, is not going to end up in their spam folder or it's gonna get filtered out because it's, uh, it's coming from an un unknown address that doesn't have the permissions that they're already giving you on your main email address. So um, just make sure that whatever you do, it's based upon something that your customer knows. So if you're a small business and you have personal relationships with all of your customers, you know, maybe it's probably a good idea to use your first and last name as, uh, as your from address. Or uh, if your store is a local branch of an 
of an organization, make sure to maybe include your location in the from address. Just anything that's going to help differentiate your message from the, uh, the messages of the corporate office that people tune out. Now, ultimately, you can also ask your customers how they know you. Uh, maybe your business uses an acronym. If people are more familiar with the acronym as opposed to the full name, just go with that acronym and use that all the time. Or vice versa, if they're maybe familiar with, uh, with your full name instead of the acronym. So those are just a few ideas uh, of things that you guys can do when it comes to setting up your from addresses properly. Um, so once you decide on a from address, just, just make sure that you're using that all the time and uh, develop some consistency there. So you'll want to be uh, sure to include information in your emails that is valuable to your users. Um, you know, creating valuable content for your emails is it's one of the largest keys in email marketing. You'll need to create content that is much more than just, you know, buy my product now. Um, you know, that's not going to be an effective campaign. I actually, you know, if, if, you have, if you ever go through your spam folder on your email list, you'd be shocked at how many people just simply say, buy this now with a link to click there. It doesn't work. Um, you know, you're, you're not going to get re good results. People, uh, you know, will quickly become unsubscribers of your email if you if you send ineffective, you know, emails without good value to them. Um, some ideas for including value in the information that you are sending customers are things like include tips and tricks on how to get the most out of your product or your service. That can be valuable information. Uh, maybe facts or research. Maybe that can help potential customers feel like they are making an informed decision about their purchase. You can even use um, entertaining content to increase the value in your messages. Um, you know, maybe you include some humor or in, include a compelling story if you've, if you've got one. Or maybe even a professional performance of, of someone using uh, that product or, or that service, something like that, if, if you know, that's available to you. Um, you do have to make sure that, you know, any of this kind of content, any entertainment uh, content is, is appropriate for your audience. And it's also, um, you know, in some way relevant to the product or surf, uh, service you're offering. Otherwise, there won't be that connection there that, that will encourage, uh, you know, the users to actually buy or, or use your service. Creating valuable offers in your email messages can help with uh, generating direct sales through your email marketing campaign. Uh, so this can help you overcome issues like uh, initial purchase hesitation or something like that. Now, with any email marketing campaign, it's, it's always important to know your audience. So um, while seeing the word discount may lead some people to think that you're trying to help them save money, other, pro other people see this and they may associate it with maybe a cheap service or a cheap business. So just make sure that wherever you're using the word discount, make sure that it's appropriate and um, make sure that it's, uh, you know, it's not comparing you to like the dollar store or an outlet store or something like that. If you're a jewelry store, you offer something a little bit on the, on the higher end side. Um, so if you want to get advanced with your emailing, uh, email marketing efforts, you can also do some, um, some data tracking or create groups or segments of users and then maybe cater your message towards them and tailor it for each segment. Of, uh, of your groups out there. So we'll get into tracking in a little bit, but this is just something for you guys to keep in mind. Now you also want to be sure that you include a call to action in your email messages. And a call to action can be placed just about anywhere in your message, but usually it is somewhere towards the bottom of the email. Now an example of this is uh, maybe in the subject line, you could say something like, read this email before purchasing a uh, product or service or read this email before purchasing a PlayStation 4 or something like that. Um, this can be effective if you think a lot about how people are uh, familiar with the product or the name of service that, or the name of the service that you're comparing it to. Now, another thing to consider is you can use multiple call to actions within your message, but you want to be very wise about how you do it. So if you're gonna go this route and you're gonna have multiple call to actions, an effective method for, for doing this is to create maybe three different levels of commitment to your subscribers. Um, so what I mean by this is on one section of your message, you can maybe include a call to action that says, purchase this product now. Then maybe you can include one that says, send this message to a friend. And then maybe your last final message says, 
like us on Facebook or something like that. So, you know, this creates a few different options for users who maybe aren't quite ready to buy something yet, but they still do have a call to action. It allows you to see that, uh, you know, this person is actually interested in purchasing something in the future, but maybe at this moment in time, they're just not ready to pull the trigger yet. Uh, something else to consider is links uh, in your content. Links can be very, very effective for your content. Um, links are another el uh, element, you know, uh, you want to make sure that the users that are reading your email are able to access the pages you are trying to direct them to easily, um, as well as easily navigate through your message if necessary. If, if you know, if, if they have to scroll to read the whole message, you can include uh, navigational links that will take them directly to the the content of the message that you know they're actually interested in um, several different types of links so let's go over them uh, real quickly here uh, first are text links you're probably already familiar with what I mean when I say a text link um, but in case you're not a text link is just text within your message that triggers some sort of action when it is actually clicked text links in an email message can be used to open a web browser to send the user to a, a specific page that has more information about the message you're conveying um, and again, they can also be used for those navigational purposes. Uh, an example is if, if you're uh, of navigation, if, if you have several sections, uh, again, and you know, I've, I've kind of already went over this, but if somebody has to scroll to, to find those sections, uh, keep some navigational items in there that helps them just get right to the information that they want. With text links, you want to make sure um, it's very clear what will happen when the user clicks on it. Uh, you know, it used to be very, very common for people to just use like click here, but maybe, you know, if you're trying to get them to, to, you know, download some, some information, you know, download this, this paper here, uh, something like that, something a little bit better than just, you know, click here, more information, something that's very directly tells them what will happen when they click on that link. A text link can also uh, be an email address, and this might open the email client when it's clicked on. Um, you can also use image links. One way to use an image link uh, as a link is to have your logo link to your website. Your, your, and that's a really good practice, very common practice you've probably seen. If your logo is at the top of your email, probably link that directly to your website just in case somebody clicks on it. Another example would be if you want to link your users to a video, you'll want to use a screenshot of that video in your message um, and, and link to that page. Maybe a screenshot with that play button, you know, kind of over the top of it. So it makes it obvious that if somebody clicks there, that video will play. Uh, that actually reminds me of something uh, we should mention here. Don't use attachments in your email me uh, messages. So don't attach a video to the message. Don't attach... Uh, you know, a PDF, anything really. You don't want to, there, there's really no exception that I can think of here. Um, link to the content as opposed to attaching it because attachments are a surefire way to get your messages blocked or filtered. Um, you know, some people, even if it does get to them, it doesn't get blocked or filtered. Uh, there's a good chance the user won't even open it just for fear of, of you know, a virus or, or malware. So uh, again, not a single exception I can think to that rule. No attachments in your email marketing campaign. Uh, but back to links. Uh, another thing to consider is mobile optimized links. Properly formatted, uh, phone numbers can make it so with one tap on the user's phone, it will actually dial the number. Uh, very, very useful. Addresses, uh, you know, physical addresses, street addresses, can also automatically link the user to their navigation application so that they can uh, get directions to the address that's listed in the, in the message. Uh, most smartphones are smart enough to recognize that these, uh, you know, recognize these kind of links automatically, um, but you just have to make sure that you do format them correctly. Definitely something to keep in mind when formatting your content. All right, so let's uh, get into the last part of our presentation here. We've covered a bit of ground so far, so, um, you know, if we've missed anything, this is where, you know, you have a chance to maybe ask us a question after this. Otherwise, feel free to just check back on um, on our website later after we post this and maybe you can review it and, and find uh, some links to the resources or examples that we talked about in the webinar. All right, so last part, let's talk about advanced techniques for email marketing. Now, this webinar is intended as more of an introduction to email marketing, so we're not trying to go too far down the rabbit hole here and get you lost with some advanced techniques, but there are a few worth mentioning and we encourage you guys to check these out through your own research if you're ready to dive in and take things a little bit more, uh, a little bit more advanced. So, 
Um, for these advanced techniques, it's rec recommended that you have a fairly large subscriber base first. So if you have maybe 50 to 100 subscribers and um, you know, you, you're getting some emails out to them, maybe the data that you get from these techniques is not going to be large enough. Um, it's not going to be a large enough sample for you to really get any you know, really strong benefit from uh, from this information. So uh, let's talk about segmenting first. Segmenting is all about grouping your subscribers according to their behavior. So one example of segmenting is, you know, uh, maybe new signups for your for your site or uh, for your service. So having a welcome, welcome email ready for whenever new users come in and sign up is a great practice. Um, so this is another message where, you know, uh, the bulk of your of your content is supposed to be non-promotional. So maybe just thank them for making their purchase and, um, you know, say, hey, maybe later on down the road, here's what you can expect from us. Just be on the lookout for this and that and maybe give them a coupon or some sort of incentive in the message to help them come back and uh, maybe open up future messages from you. So, you know, just don't hit them over the head with, with too salesy of an email right away. Now, another example of segmenting users would um, you know, people that maybe made a purchase in the past and they haven't purchased anything in the last six months, you know, this is a great group of people to target here. Um, now you can use any time frame you want, but the idea is that you're sending a message to previous customers and you're offering them a new incentive to return to your website and do business with you um, that maybe they, they haven't really been um, keeping up with with uh, you know, all the latest happenings in your business. So this is a great time to maybe touch base with them, let them know what you've been working on and let them know that it's a great time for them to come back. Or uh, perhaps maybe you guys wanna create a segment for recent purchases and just simply send them a message asking them to review their purchase and make sure everything looks good. So you, know, you can use your, uh, you can get creative and use your imagination. There's a lot of different ways that you can you know, employ segmenting here, but um, Whatever you do, you just want to make sure that you have proper analytics in place for your site and, uh, you know, make sure that you're getting all the data that you can from these segments. So um, these are just, you know, a few of the tried and two tech techniques out there. But, um, you know, if you want to take this a little bit further, just let us know and we can, we can give you a hand. So the last thing I'd like to touch on is A-B testing. So A-B testing is a practice of sending out two different versions of this of, of your message to different subscribers. Um, another term for A-B testing is split testing. And uh, this is a great way to track the measurables of the message that you send out and see which version of the, of the message performs better. So um, you just want to be smart with how you do this and keep your variations fairly subtle so that you can get an accurate picture as to what's going on. Um, so one really common A-B split test is to try and use different color buttons in your message. It may sound really, really simple, but you'd actually be surprised how much of a difference the, the changing of one simple color can make in uh, the percentage of users that actually click on that button. So very subtle change, but again, you can easily measure how that is, uh, how that's actually being interpreted by your users out there. So um, another useful A-B test is for email marketing. Uh, or sorry, another another familiar uh, A/B test in, in email marketing is uh, just trying different subject lines. So really simple, you know, just maybe switch up your subject and um, you know see which percentage of users click on your subject line or sorry, click in your email depending on what subject line you say. Maybe it's a funny subject line versus a serious message, or uh, or maybe you you know take a more personalized approach towards a very general approach, but just experiment with different subjects. And, um, you know, I'm sure you can, you can get some really good results out of that. All right. So, uh, now we're going to open up for some questions. Hopefully that was some useful information for you guys to start your email marketing campaigns. Um, real quick, this is actually going to close my presentation. No, no, it didn't. If anybody's got any questions, please feel free to type it in the chat box and we'll do our best to answer it. Um, I see we already have a couple questions here. Uh, the first one is, is there a limit to the amount, is there a limit to the amount of segments I can create for an email marketing campaign? Mm -hmm. No, absolutely not. This is completely up to you. You have, um, you know, you're in complete control of this if you're controlling your marketing campaign. However you want to divide the segments up. If it's, you know, say it's people that, that went to your page and maybe put, 
an item in their shopping cart, but then didn't purchase. That can be a segment or, um, you know, maybe somebody who uh, has purchased three items from you, you know, a certain, you know, you can set a certain number of items you, that can create a segment. Uh, again, we, uh, gr- I think it was Greg mentioned uh, somebody who maybe purchased something, hasn't purchased in, you know, a set amount of time, six months, a year, whatever it is, uh, retarget those people as, as a segment. Um, so there's really no limit. You can get real creative with this too. Uh, even as simple, you know, if you tie this in with your, your analytics of your website, even as simple as something that, you know, somebody who's visited three different pages of my website in one, in one visit, that can be a segment of users. So there's no limit to this. You can get as creative as you want. Um, again, there are some tried and true techniques out there. So, you know, uh, research those, but you know, anything that you can think of that helps your email marketing, you can, you can create a segment for that. Uh, and a Great second question. question, and this is probably a good one for Greg. How can I prevent my messages from ending up in spam? Okay, Blake. Well, um, there are a couple different things that you can do. I'm glad you asked. Sorry that we didn't touch on this before, but, um, this is really important. I think Joe mentioned earlier that the most important thing that you can do is to avoid using attachments in your emails. Um, obviously, that's uh, that's really important. Having any sort of attachments, whether they're large or small, is going to increase the likelihood that your email is going to end up in spam. So just don't do it. Don't get in the habit of doing that at all. Um, another thing that you can probably that you can do is um, to try and keep a good ratio of text to images in your email. So. Don't have way too many images and not enough text that's uh, maybe explaining what your email is about. Um, just try to keep things as informative as, as possible and um, you know less image heavy in those in those emails. Um, let me think. What else can you do? Oh, there's here's a great tip. There are uh, a few different spam checking services out there on the web. Um, there's one that I used the other day. I think it's called isnotspam.com. Don't quote me on that, but something along those lines. Um, it's a great website. What it allows you to do is actually email them your, uh, you know, your template email and they'll let you know what, you know, what the likelihood is of that message actually getting delivered or ending up in spam. So uh, great service is not spam. And uh, what else can you do? Oh, avoid spam trigger words. So um, I would, I would avoid using words like sale or promotion in the subject line. Um, anything that's trying to make it sound like you're you're giving them some some sort of a pro- promotion. I know that obviously you guys are uh, are going to use these emails for promotions. We're not saying don't do that, but there are some words that if you use maybe too much in the email, it's going to look like it's way too salesy and too spammy, and it's going to go right to the spam. So whatever you do, just try and keep the user experience as uh, as positive as you can. And make sure that uh, it's informative as possible without being too salesy. So, um, those are about four or five things that you can do. But hopefully, that'll get you started and you know help you get your delivery rate up there. Uh, one last question we got from Derek is, um, you know, what was the what was the email provider we mentioned earlier? That was senduser.com. And again, we'll post this webinar on the site. Uh, links to any resources, um, you know, any any products that we offer that may help you with this will be included on that. Uh, but thanks for joining us today. We hope this informa- information has been helpful for you. Uh, we do have more webinars coming up in our increasing sales series. You can also go to our website and view previous webinars. Um, you know, we've, we've gone over social media, um, retargeting, uh, pay-per-click. There's really good information uh, from a colleague on pay-per-click. So check out those previous webinars. Uh, hope, hope this information was helpful for you and uh, have a great day. Take care. Bye.